This video brought to you in part by the Patreon supporters of Cobra TV. Hey, what's going on guys? Thank you so much for coming back to Cobra TV. We've got a different kind of an episode today. Uh, this is the uh, the moment that I met Lycosaur, 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 and <laughs> and his crew, and they are such amazing pilots. Here's a little clip of me uh, running into them. This is how I met Lycosaur. Good thing you didn't hear a couple things I said. Who, uh, a while guys back. inside the base? Who's I'm in gonna go after one? this guy that's a bounty, Jasmine. Who what color is the armor? I'm gonna go get him, Tech. <laughs> All right. You ready to engage, you two? Or in the in near the airlock for when they do comes. Be careful being on top. They're coming in on Jump Town. Report. I mean, repeat. They're coming in on Jump Town. I'm coming behind you, How much more no, of the uh, drugs? Blow up! Blow the ship up! Okay. Uh. Carrot. It's a Gladius. Uh, COO. Oh. What? Yo, a ground team. We Watch out. Uh, they are like toenail clippers, guys. Right. Get them. Inside, get those drugs in the cuddy. Don't get out of there. Get the drugs out of there. There are two people coming that yeah. deserve the. Go they, I mean, in the ship. they're Whoever deadly. On the ramp, Salvo, get inside with him. Take off. Go. They're deadly, and these guys were so good that I just had to get this guy on and pick his brain about everything PvP, and we did just that. Me and Lycosar sat down and had a conversation about dogfighting, about where to start, what to use, what's best practices, stuff like that. And uh, so, yeah, take a listen to this if you're interested in PvP. Uh, he also teaches, um, and we'll have the links home for all that stuff uh, in the description down below. If you want to get involved and maybe, um, you know, tune up your uh, PvP skills. Lycosar! How you doing? I'm doing good, man. Is, is that how you pronounce your name, Lycosar? Yep, that's perfect. Awesome, awesome. Uh, thank you for, uh, for coming on the show, and I, and I just want to pick your brain about PvP and stuff like that, because if you remember, we ran into you, right? And you guys tore us up. I mean, tore us up. And it was like a ton of us and just a very few number. I think it was like, what, five or six of you? Something like that, but yeah, man, it was a pleasure getting to fight you. I thought you guys had some pretty cool strats, uh... But yo, Chaos. It was a pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> it, it might have looked, it might have looked like a strategy, but it's, it wasn't. Trust me, it was uh, just a bunch of Jar Jar Binks trying to trying to make things work. Um, and I remember seeing you guys. We we uh, came across you like um, uh, someone said uh, they spotted you just hanging out uh, along the perimeter of Jump Town. And I decided after about 10 minutes, I was going to go see what was going on. And they said you had a bounty or some one of your crew guys had a bounty. So I took the bounty and I cruised out there thinking I was going to tear something up. And then if you go back and watch the watch the live stream, I, I see you. You come into view and then I'm gone. I'm exploded. <laughs> it was. And the only thing I could do was that point. I said, there's three of them. They're coming. They're really good. You guys got to watch out. Um, <laughs> well, I won't that's... pretend that uh, it isn't our goal for people to see us one second and then be dead the next. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I look, I've been I've been playing for about two and a half years now. Before they changed uh, combat, I was actually getting pretty good with uh, combat, you know, dog fighting. And then they changed it, and a lot of the flight mechanics changed, and I ended up just throwing my hands up in the air and saying, hell with it, I'm going to deliver boxes and be the president of the Cobra Force. Uh, so, it, what, like, uh, what do you, how, how are you so good? Like, just, I don't know where to even start by asking you questions, but um, if you're talking to someone who's looking for advice, just to start there, like, how... Uh, what do we have to do in order, like, what, what's a good way to practice? What are good ship loadouts? Um, what's a good ship to use? What's a good uh, uh, a controller interface? Just anything that you could throw at me. Well, it, it sounds actually we 
started playing around a pretty similar time. I had this game or I registered for this game way before I could play it, but I was finally able to play it around 3.4, which it sounds like yeah. two and a half years ago, that's around when you started. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, so I started playing in 3.4 and, you know, kind of started getting into PvP a little bit, but then they completely changed everything in 3.5. And I remember those days, if you wanted to use fixed weapons, if you aimed at the pip, it would actually <laughs> make you miss. So it was a pretty wacky time, and flight was so slow by comparison to how it was. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I just started PvPing. I started to get a feel for that. I, It's what I wanted. I found it exhilarating. And, uh, you know, kind of tolerated it until 3.6, 3.7, when... Uh, people kind of started figuring things out. They fixed pips a little bit so you wouldn't miss every time you were on target. Right. And things got better. And around 3.7 is when I really started getting into it, really started getting into the PvP. And, uh, you know, you could, in the PU against your average pilot who doesn't really do much combat, uh, you can do okay um, as long as you're dedicated to, you know, practicing and PvPing, but once in a while, as a starting PvPer, you'll run into somebody who you have no idea how to fight them. They just annihilate you, <laughs> and and you replay it back. Maybe you record it on Shadowplay, and you're like, "Wow, this guy was all over me," and I felt like I couldn't do anything. Yeah, that's how I feel most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and it, it was those experiences where I just really thought, "Man, what are these guys doing that I'm not? Why are they?" so good yeah and uh, you just kind of at least in the beginning i'd play back the footage i'd watch what they do and then i tried doing similar things and eventually you know while they were still annihilating me i was able to you know maybe get their shields down or something like that until they obliterated me and then eventually you get comfortable enough where you graduate from the PU and you start going into Arena Commander and you go through the same cycle where everybody kills you <laughs> as if you... Uh, and you feel like you could never hit them at all. But uh, you just... It really is a mindset thing. You just got to accept, hey, you know, I suck. But if I keep grinding at this, it's going to be a matter of time until I at least stand some semblance of chance. There's so much but to of it. of course, there really is. And, and that is not an efficient way to go about it. <laughs> Just grinding <laughs> it out. And, uh, I didn't really have anybody to teach me. Yeah. I wasn't... Um, there were a few PvP communities at the time, at least that I was aware of. There was the Star Citizen Competitive Combat Club, but it seemed like a lot of the people who were really active in P PvP pre-3.5 kind of were pretty jaded and didn't really want to play anymore. So once I started getting, you know, some experience in PvP, I started making YouTube videos about it, uh, show, at least demonstrating that I was having in combat, and you could do some cool things. Then I started uh, my own Discord server, seeing that SC4 had kind of died out, which today is the Star Citizen PvP Academy, which has grown into being the largest pvp focused discord for star citizen and hmm. basically it, it was just based on the mindset of you know suppress that ego as much as you can always be willing to learn respect your opponents but don't fear them and you could learn something from every fight and right. well the way that i <laughs> approached it was not efficient at all and it took me many months to approach some basic level of competency uh it was that mindset that allowed me to get to where I am today, where I I would say I'm definitely pretty... I would say, you know... <laughs> I'm Go ahead and say it. You deserve it. <laughs> Go ahead. And, uh, <laughs> and, you know, besides that, though, I have an org of, you know, Liberty's Reapers, and we have uh, several first places in PvP competitions under our belt. And, uh, you know, those pilots, I am just average among them, which is a real honor to be able to say something like that. Really? <laughs> but anyways, so that's kind of the, the way I got started. Now the way I recommend 
that people develop some competency and not have to grind and get annihilated <clears throat> for quite as long. Right. So just join a community. Um, one resource that people have available is you can check out our server, discord.gg slash star citizen PVP. And some of the pilots from my org will host a weekly public training session and try and teach you the basics of flight and BP combat. Okay. Yeah, there's there's just so much uh, to it. Like, you don't, I, a person like me definitely doesn't know where to start because you have, oh, man, you, you got, what what do you use? You know, you're thinking to yourself, do I use my controller? Do I use my joysticks? Do I use keyboard and mouse? And then once I figure out on one of those, how do I set my curves? What's the sensitivity supposed to be? Then when you get that figured out, it's like, okay, can you can you even aim? You know, you got to practice aiming, then you got to figure out equipment. You got to start to know your equipment. And that's something... Uh, along with flight mechanics too, is ever changing. So you have to constantly, you're constantly learning, uh, especially when there's a new update or a new patch. It's like, oh, the weapons I was using, they're shit now. So what do we got to use? How do, how do you, how do you figure out what to what to use as far as weapons when there's a new patch? Do, is it just uh, word of mouth? Oh well, yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, every patch brings a new meta. Some weapons are good. The ones that were meta before are now terrible. And that always changes, but one thing that never changes is if you develop those gross motor skills and the fine motor skills to be good with whatever controllers you're using. Uh, aim has always been important to an extent in this game. Understanding how the pip will be affected by your own movements is always important. And knowing uh, the different phases of a fight the approach, uh, when you're in a turn fight, when you're in a stray fight, those things will always be a component of the game. And even if the meta changes and the weapons change, your motor abilities will carry over. And most of the people that I know, in my org at least, uh, who are good one patch, even if things change completely, it doesn't take them that long to get used to it and uh, get pretty competent. Right. As far as patch to patch and how to set up your controls, depending on which ones you have, I'm dual stick and pedals myself, um, and I have some guides on my YouTube channel on what I think are the best settings and best way to set that up, and that's youtube.com slash Lycosar. But I know some excellent pilots who fly with different controllers. In my org, it's mostly people using dual stick and pedals, but there are also quite fantastic... Um, mouse and keyboard pilots out there as well as far as using a a gamepad a controller i don't know of anyone who's competitive with that but that doesn't mean they're not out there so you've never met anybody that uses a gamepad that can hold their own i have not yet but that doesn't mean that they're not out there and i don't okay. know the controller that all the regulars use in ac anyway but I think most people are either mouse and keyboard or dual stick. Okay. And, and mouse and keyboard and dual stick, uh, in your opinion, which one do you think would be like the, the go-to? Well, some people, um, it depends on what is important to you. So I would say that right now there is an advantage to aiming with mouse um, because aiming is really important now, but uh, you have some advantages with stick in one it's more immersive it's more fun it is a flying game so it feels better to fly with sticks of course and while your aim isn't i don't think you have the same potential for aim you have a uh, greater potential for more elaborate maneuvers and for interception pursuit and various things like that. so i personally think uh if you're willing to spend the money I think you'll have a more enjoyable experience as a dual stick uh, and pedal pilot specifically. But uh, if you just want to be competitive and you don't want to invest a lot of money, and you don't care about immersion as much, then I think you can be very competitive with mouse and Okay. Um, and you said that you open up your Discord to actually train people to do PvP, right? Definitely. Um Anyone can really come in there. We have some of the pilots from my org, Liberty's Reapers, who 
usually every Sunday we'll offer a practice and all are welcome. All right, well, we I'm going to be giving away every single fine detail of <laughs> Ah, but, just uh, like the Sith master. I see what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but we generally see we'll teach you the basics and you'll be able to hold your own and if you're uh if you manage to learn everything that we teach in those sessions, then you'll easily be, you know, far above average pilot at least in the EU and you should be able to hold your own in arena command. I see. Uh, is there a static um, link for your Discord that doesn't expire? There is. Discord.gg slash Star Citizen PvP. Okay. Can, is, is there any way that you could post that in the uh, Twitch chat? Absolutely. All right. I want to grab that because I'm going to be posting this to YouTube um, if that's okay with you. Of and then, course, please. Okay. And then I'm going to uh, make sure that's in the comment section. Um, and we'd love to see you in there too. <laughs> yeah, we, I'll join. Actually, I'll join it right now. Um, let's see, join. All right, I yeah, just man, joined. We, we'd we'd be happy to have you and uh, hopefully give you some tips that could really uh, you know fast track you into getting back into the game. Yeah, I, I definitely need to learn how, man. Uh, from you know, we had a big group that day. What could you see? that we were doing wrong? Were we allowing you to chase us away from each other? Or what was it that, what tactic did you use on us? Pretty much nothing, right? I mean, did it seem like we're all AFK anyway? Well, hard to say. <laughs> it would be easier for me to say if we were flying a matched, um, a matched squadron. We were yeah. mostly light fighters. And I think you guys were maybe half in multi-crew ships and half in fighters. So it's hard right. to say. I mean, right now, I think, uh, for example, you take a ship like the Redeemer. If you fully crew Redeemer, I think against the average pilots in the PU, I think, what, you can get five people in a Redeemer or four people in a Redeemer if it's fully right. crewed. I think against the, if you had one fully crewed Redeemer against four people in light fighters who didn't really know what they were doing, then I think you'd probably... Redeemer would probably come out on top. But um, we train for all these scenarios. My org trained, you know, especially for the tournament that came up. We had a contingency plan and a, and a tactical plan for how to address every type of scenario. Uh, so it's it's... I would say the main thing is uh, it was a trained force against an untrained force. Right. And if you guys, and but that's what we're all about. We're a PvP focused org. We try to maintain an esports level performance. We train on a regular basis for competitive combat. Sounds amazing, dude. Uh, you don't happen to stream, do you? I do. Yeah, I just started actually. Uh, uh, post that link in the chat ago. too, um, if you could. Will do, and thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. And do you have a YouTube channel? I do as well, yeah. And Put that in there too, to man. Time to time. <laughs> I try <laughs> to give some uh, some combat videos from time to time. Re lately, it's been mostly competition footage and stuff like that. Uh -huh. But uh, also, um, one of the other org leaders, right, hopefully it's better now, Azure Lance, he's been posting some flight instructional videos that I think are very helpful as well. Okay. So I'll, I'll trap yeah. that in your chat if you're yep. okay with that. Any link that you want to post, you post in there. Um, all right. Thanks. Oh, look, I'm already subscribed to you. Oh, there we on go. On YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> one of your subscribers. I don't Yeah, that's cool. Um, trying to think of how I found your channel. That's pretty cool. Uh, and then we'll get to see this one right here. Uh, I happened to, uh, I was trying to get Nab an interview. And uh, this might be, uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know if you want to get involved in this conversation, but um, I was trying to get an interview because, uh, well, <laughs> with Griefernet. I don't know. You know who that is, right? I have heard about the the latest drama coming. Right, from. right. Well, they come to my channel and they try to, uh, you know, they come to my channel and they're, they, they chat a lot. I don't chase them off out of here because... 
for two years on my streams, I've always said that I don't care if anybody stream snipes me because if, if I got 30 people and we're we're trying to find something to do and we can't, you know, like, hey, what are we going to go do? I don't know. We could go look at the pretty sunset. Um, and if somebody stream snipes, <laughs> right, if somebody stream snipes, then we got content. We got something we could go do. We got action. We got drama, you know, as long as it doesn't get toxic, it's cool. Um, yeah, and I, so I feel the same way, man. <laughs> yeah. And, and so I, I've told uh, Spur and all those people, I said, I don't mind stream sniping. I'll never uh, report you for that because they posted somebody posted me on uh, Spectrum. I posted an article uh, or a post on Spectrum stating that I reported um, somebody and I never did. I mean, I've, I could I can open up my tickets if that's a possible thing to do and show you that I've never reported a single soul. Um, no, and like right. So uh, Griefer and those guys, they come over to hang out and sometimes they stream snipe me and sometimes they piss me off, which I mean, I get pissed off when they use the call feature bug. You know, when they call the exploit, when they call and get your location, and then that pisses me off. The stream sniping doesn't piss me off. Uh, but earlier, uh, he was in the chat today, and I said, hey, um, I'm going to be interviewing Lycasar here in a little bit, and I would like to interview you too. Um, but uh, his immediate response to you was, Fuck that <laughs> And like a song. <laughs> what have you done to these guys? I who was it? Uh, it was Sfer. 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 Oh, Sfer, yeah. Um Oh, I guess he probably doesn't like me because he was banned from the academy. Oh, he was banned. Why? What I, happened? I think he's I think he's one of three people. Uh he just, you know I don't know all of his transgressions because I I'm not really active on the moderation side. I trust uh, Azure Lance and Recret, the moderator, to handle that. But my understanding is that uh, I don't know. I honestly didn't didn't really catch much of it, but I know that he was banned. Thank you, Karen. Yeah, um, and you know, I, as a streamer, I don't feel like I have any special privileges. You know, like. Uh, I don't know. Maybe streamers feel like they have special privilege. I'm streaming. You're not allowed to mess with me. I don't. I'm not like that. I have no special privileges as far as being a streamer. And if me streaming my content is it's my fault for streaming my location. That's how I see it. You know, somebody comes. They're using their computer they paid for, their internet that they paid for, their account that they made on Twitch, and they're allowed to go view anybody they want. And then they got the game that they paid for. You know, as long as it's not night after night after night after night harassment, server after server after server, I mean that's that you know that's kind of considered harassment at that point. Um, but uh, as far as using my stream to stream snipe me, I don't, I really don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah, I pretty much have the same philosophy on it as you. I mean, it's you know, it's there is an operational security element to it. Like, for example, when I was streaming the tournament, I had, like, a one-minute delay on there. <laughs> because, of course, if I'm streaming, it's I know that it's public. Yeah. And I, I shouldn't be surprised if people are using that. Right, um, right. But that being said, I, I'm not super familiar with all the grief or net controversy, but... Um, and I think that a lot of the time, at least in my PvP experience in the PU... A lot of people call people griefers who are just PvPing. Yeah. No, uh, killing somebody in the game, it, and everybody calls it griefing. Look, I'm not a good pilot. I don't fight well on a ship, right? But I'm I'm pro PvP. I'm pro kill on sight. I'm pro using the guns on your ship to kill other people if that's what you want to do and how you want to play the game. When I first started yeah. playing the game, and it was 2019, uh, Blind Zato, a guy that I met, he's a pirate, um, he uh, cornered me in uh, Grim Hex, and he looked at me and said, it's a dangerous verse. And I, that's what this is. And it's a beautiful verse. It's, a, it's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's got a lot of uh, ways to make UEC, but it's also a dangerous verse. And that's what makes the game fun, is some psychopath coming out and just shooting you for no goddamn reason. You know? And, yeah. And uh, well, that's... What's different in, in this case, I would say, is that these guys are self-proclaimed griefers 
<laughs> That's what they call themselves. Well, I that think it's their their objective. I think they call themselves griefers and they call themselves griefernet because that's what people call them. And, you know, if people keep labeling you something, why not just throw that dress on and dance around, you know? Yeah, no, I, I agree. Maybe it's um, sort of a, yeah, uh, maybe it's tongue in cheek in that way. I don't know. To be honest, I'm not familiar enough with the situation to be able to comment on it from an informed perspective, but uh yeah, I seen your in your chat, Ray Space says griefing is not PvP, blowing a ship on the pad while someone is trying to board. Yeah, I agree. I mean pad ramming and stuff like that is is not PvP. But every ship has a gun on it. And if you're right. flying around, there's criminals around. Yeah. You have to be prepared. Yep. It makes the verse fun. You know, you, you you land somewhere and it's a popular place. Maybe it's not an armistice zone. You got to run in and grab a box or something like that or run in. And and uh, it, it makes it scary because, you know, you got to get in there and get back to your ship because somebody could show up and somebody could kill you. You know, and that's that's what makes it fun. It kind of turns the game into a horror game sometimes, especially when you're trading. Holy shit. Um, yeah. And that's the joy of, a, at least for me, a multiplayer. Uh, for me knowing that there's this ever-present risk and danger makes it exciting. But that's yeah. just me. Yeah, they hang out here. They've messed with me um, before, and I I don't really get pissed off. I did get pissed off one time at them, and that's when they were using the call exploit to get a marker for me because I, I wanted to get regrouped and battle them. Um, but they, he, he, they called me and got the, uh, you know, the little marker. And so oh, I, <laughs> yeah, so I erased my med bed on the I Carrick. Know about that. <laughs> uh, I erased my med bed on the Carrick and, uh, backspaced and respawned somewhere else. So that way my pilot and crew could get somewhere else and we could regroup with different ships and come up with a plan. Um, at that point, the person who had called me which I'm not going to name names right now, but the person who called me actually called the pilot and got his marker. So it made it impossible oh. for us to be able to, to you know, get come up with a plan. And, and I wanted to engage them. That's terrible. Right? Yeah. It is. And so that's that's the only bad incident I've had. I've had some run-ins with them. They've come and they stream snipe me. I think it's okay. I don't worry about it. Now, I, I don't know what they've done to other streamers. Um, I did see the one video... And I think the guy overreacted seriously. I swear to God, he overreacted, uh, the streamer. Um, but again, I don't know the whole story. I don't know if they harass people night after night after night after night. I I don't know that. I, all I know is firsthand experience of what they've done to us. And it's not that bad. Yeah, I mean, and if it's night after night, you're specifically organizing to try and force some sort of reaction out of somebody it's not just to engage in you know the thrill of combat but it's specifically constantly going there and trying to elicit uh, a negative reaction that yeah. i would probably say falls more towards the you know the the toxicity but uh if it's just hey you you happen to be streaming you're also these guys want to fight uh that that i don't know uh that maybe is more of a gray area. And personally, I, I agree. I mean, if you're streaming, you're kind of, uh, that's a risk you must accept that people yeah. will come after you and they know where you are and they know where to find you. Yep, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, so for somebody, uh, uh, cause I got a lot of people in my org. Um, we're not like one of those insanely big orgs. We're almost at 3000 members. Uh, but wow. There's a lot of people in my org that do want to learn how to PvP. So the first step is they should probably join your Discord and maybe get involved in uh, some of those training uh, things that you guys have, right? Uh, what if some? What if there's somebody right now who's a little bit too shy and they don't want to join the Discord, they, they don't want to fly around? Because I got a lot of people that um, are in our org, but they never join the call or the party or anything like that. What kind of advice could you give them right now if they wanted to start learning how to be a better pilot? All right, that's an excellent question. Um, so what I would probably say is you want to then build the basic fundamentals. 
combat. Step one would really be you should develop your aim without putting in any fancy maneuver. So a great place to start to build aim, go ahead and grind it away in Vandal Swarm or Pirate Swarm. And don't try to add any fancy maneuvers, just try and be able to track the pip. Once okay. you can track the pip without trying any fancy maneuvers, then the next step will be, okay, maybe you can track the pip, but you know, you're know, you often flying past the target. You're only engaged with them for a short period of time. The next step you wanna do is make it so that you can remain engaged and you could stay close to the target without f throwing any fancy evasive maneuvers in there. Just try and stay close to the target. So, step three, now that you can aim without trying any evasive maneuvers, and now that you can stay close to your target, now try and make it so that the enemy can't hit you. Now try throwing in some fancy maneuvers. Um, and that introduces a... A level of complexity because every evasive maneuver you attempt makes it harder for you to aim. Um, so that takes some time getting used to. But if you have those three fundamentals down, you can aim, you can stay close to the target, and you can compensate your aim for your own evasive maneuvers against NPCs, That's then you're in a pretty good spot. And I think at that point, um, feel confident to hop into some trainings with uh, my org mates to kind of take yourself to the next level or if you want to be on your own maybe you you don't want to hop into there then a great thing to do at that point is if you're easily handling npcs then hop into arena commander go into battle royale be prepared you'll probably get shredded initially but keep grinding away and keep dying but maintain that mentality of oh well that's okay i'm losing but every fight maybe i take their shields two percent more than i did the last fight right and if you keep grinding away at it with that mentality you build those three fundamentals you'll be in a good spot and typically when you're in a dogfight with somebody are you at are you flying at scm well, to be honest, I don't really look at my absolute speed. The only thing I care about is my relative speed with whoever it is I'm fighting. So, generally speaking, I think most fights start out at slow speed, but um, they could end up fast. Maybe we're both drifting while we're circling around each other or trying to knife fight each other. Uh, but it doesn't really matter. The absolute speed, I, I don't really pay attention to in the combat. I, I just look at how is the enemy moving with respect to me. But generally, at least the way that I fight, it's always really close range within 600 meters at pretty much all times. And if I can, bring it within 300, 200 meters or even less. Okay. Where you start turn fighting rather than sort of straight fighting, aim racing at distance. And what's your ship of choice? Right now, I think uh, the Gladius and the Arrow are both strong contenders with the Gladius having a slight edge as the superior dogfighter. What, what, what gives the Gladius an edge? Uh, well, it has marginally less DPS than the Arrow, but it has two shields instead of just one okay i got it and and both the arrow and the gladius uh they're awesome ships to fly because the way you survive in those ships is by avoiding fire rather than tanking it so i think most pvpers they enjoy combat where your survival depends on the maneuvers you perform rather than being a bullet sponge and taking as many shots as you possibly can before you blow up. Right. And that's why we, we all love light fighters. And what's a, 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 a like an ideal loadout? Are you using lasers, ballistics? Um, it depends. Uh, generally, in Arena Commander, I'll run a full laser repeater loadout, size 3. The stock Panthers that come on the Gladius are pretty good. 
Okay. Um, all the lasers, I think, all the laser repeaters still all have the same stats, so just pick whichever one you like the sound and projectile look of the most. <laughs> and then as far as shields, um, any Class A military shields. Class A military. Are the meta. Okay. All right. Um, I don't know. Could you think of anything else that uh, I might need to know or... I think that was pretty comprehensive, and uh, I appreciate you taking the time to do this interview. And this yeah, dude, I wasn't an enjoyable conversation. Yeah, I, I look. Uh, we run into a lot of people who are like as good as you, and some people are really cocky, you know. And it could get kind of toxic sometimes. And PvP, you know, I blame it on just the the tribalness in in all of us. And when, and when you got when anybody PvPs, it could turn toxic even on accident. You know, like, Quack. you, man, no take that out of the video. I'm not going to put that on YouTube, but you know what I mean, right? <laughs> um, and uh, you well, guys kept... You. Let, let, me, let me actually say something about that, because when I first started PvPing, that yeah. was the impression I was getting from the community. Uh, it felt... Uh, it really did feel that way. Um, it seemed like a lot of PvPers had left, and a lot of the ones that were still active were either... You know, in their own org servers or, um, you know, that you really weren't seeing many people. And um, I really didn't see a community where it was, hey, you know, let's just get better. We all suck. Let's <laughs> try and improve together. Uh, Ekamore, yeah. uh, he's asking a question in chat. Uh, I guess this is his third time. I want to make sure I answer it because I didn't see it before. Uh, he's asking how much are real life flight mechanics and techniques used, uh, or is that an, is that a thing? Uh, I think pretty minimally, just because the uh, the fact alone that the ships can fly in a in a different direction um, than where the nose is pointing, and you don't really have to point towards where you want to go. I think it ends up being very different. I mean combat is almost always some form where the opponent and you are facing each other so right. unfortunately i don't think um you know being good at a game like dcs for example will necessarily translate i see i see now Although now you must do play that game and love it <laughs> i've been looking at i, I have dcs i saw space i was watching space got lit played earlier and uh, he looked a little frustrated. <laughs> um, but uh, it, it, I wanted to ask you real quick. Also, and if one, any... one, more, Go one ahead. more thing I wanted to say was, uh, yeah, it, it doesn't make sense if you, you know, once you get to a, a pretty good level of competence in PvP, it, it never made sense to me why you would be toxic to people who aren't yet at that level. Because in the end of the day, we all sucked at some point. We were all noobs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When uh, you're, if anybody else has any questions, uh, go ahead and and get them in here real quick. Um, when you're fighting, are you usually coupled, or are you switching back and forth? Since three point fourteen, I have been mostly decoupled. Really, and there's a few reasons for that. Um, okay, it used to be back before that, um, like around. 3.7, 3.8, coupled mode worked different. Coupled would basically give you maximum acceleration depending on where you're telling the ship you want to go with your inputs. Now the way that they reworked coupled mode, it has some sort of stability mode in it where it oftentimes will limit your accelerations. So with decoupled, it has some advantages. You always have control of your ship's thrust. You also have graded control, whereas coupled will generally fire thrusters at near maximum or maximum. With decoupled, uh, if I want only 50% thrust, then I deflect my stick 50%. And it's useful because there are some times when you don't want maximum acceleration. Maybe you want to make some fine corrections. Um, and then the other thing with decoupled mode is um, in team combat, where you're burning lots of acceleration frequently um, to try and, you know, 
do the various things, you tend to overheat less and you generate less heat. Oh, okay. All and right. You tend to burn less boost or consume less boost fuel because um, because you can choose which exactly which thrusters you want to fire. So if I only want to go forward, I just apply forward thrust. And I think, unless they change this, the less thrusters you're actively firing while you're using boost, the less boost you use. And I think that's still how it is. It was like that in 3.14. I haven't tested it since, but those were my observations then. Okay. All right. Um, Mr. Boy, we're, yeah, we're talking to Lycosar. Um Am I saying it right? I am right. Lycosar. That's right. That's perfect. Okay. It's my org trolling and misspelling my name in the chat. It, oh, that's <laughs> Lucasor? <laughs> Why, is that what some people call you? Uh... Yeah, it's it's an it's an inside joke. <laughs> I saw somebody earlier in the chat uh, wanting to have your babies, um, so uh, you might want to go back and uh, review that, find out who it was, and uh, maybe see if that's an avenue you want to go down. Um, <laughs> um, okay, so I don't see anybody else asking any questions in the chat. Um, like us, our man. Thank you for coming on the show. I really appreciate it, and I think I, I appreciate your kindness too. It was my pleasure, and thank you for taking the time, and thank you for having me. And uh, hopefully one of these days we'll see you in some training with us. Yep, hopefully hopefully the next time you see me, I'll be tearing you up. Oh, I have not no going to happen. It's not going to happen. Soon that will happen. <laughs> with time, it will. With time, it will, man. Maybe, maybe. Um, do me a favor, and before you leave, or if anybody in your chat or in your org, I see some, pe some of your uh, guys and girls there, uh, if you guys could just go ahead and post links uh, to your Discord again, to his YouTube channel, to his uh, friend's YouTube channel, anything, any links that you got, Twitch channel, anything like that, um, just go post away. Uh, and again, like I said, thank you so much, buddy. And thank you. It was a pleasure. Take care. All right. You too, bud.